This is Chapter 5, Consolidation of Less Than Wholly Owned Subsidiaries Acquired at More Than Book Value. And Learning Objective 1 is to understand and explain how the consolidation process differs when the subsidiary is less than wholly owned and there is a differential. So this culminates the first five chapters of the book where we were looking at situations. We started off with Chapter 1, an introduction. Chapter 2, we looked at wholly owned subsidiary where investment equals book value, i.e. there was no differential. Chapter 3, we looked at a partially owned subsidiary with no differential. Chapter 4, we looked at a wholly owned subsidiary with a differential. And now we're going to put together the partially owned and the differential together into one single scenario, which is Chapter 5. So. Chapter 5 really combines everything we've seen before. Um, you, can't really skip, you can't really skip 3 or 4 before you do 5, so I suggest that if you haven't yet finished 3 or 4, you go back, you finish them, and then you start Chapter 5. And this just incorporates a lot of things that we've seen before. The process with a differential is pretty much the same as a wholly owned subsidiary, except you have to take into consideration the non-controlling interest. Specifically, what you're going to do is, when you compute the total value of the acquisition, you're going to include not only the investment that was made by the parent, but you're also going to include the value of the non-controlling interest. Here's how the textbook presents the example. Assume January 1st, 2021, Peerless Products acquires 80% of the common stock of special foods for 310. At that date, the fair value of the non-controlling interest is estimated to be 77500 So you can see here that the parent is contributing 20% to, to this purchase the sub. The non-controlling interest still holds 20%. So, the total value that's really being invested in the subsidiary is 387500 that would be the 310,000 contributed by Peerless plus the value of the non-controlling interest, 77,500. That's 387,500. And the total differential itself is 87,5 because the investment by the parent and the non-controlling interest together is 387,500. And then the book value of special foods on the date of acquisition is $300,000. And looked at in Excel, we could, the journal entry to record this acquisition on the books of Peerless would be to debit investment in special food stock for $310,000 and credit however it was paid for, in this case cash, for $310,000. And here you can see the balance sheets of the two entities, Peerless and Special. I arrange it slightly differently from the book. I hope you don't mind. And um, th there's three items that are the sources of the differential. One is inventory, which needs to be written up by 5000 Another is land, which needs to be written up by 10000 Another is buildings and equipment, which needs to be written up by $60,000. So so the total write-ups of assets, and if they were write-ups, they would be netted against these, is 77500 Now let's assume again, as we said before, the non-controlling interest has a fair market value of 77500 If we were to do a detailed calculation here, as we did before, we would see that total investment was 387500 That's 310 invested by the parent to buy, buy, buy special. And the 20% non-controlling interest of special is 77500 So the total investment into special is 387500 The book value of special is 300 That's 200000 in common stock plus 100000 in retained earnings, meaning that you have a full differential. The full value of the differential here is 87500 Now, part of this is accounted for by the write-ups of inventory, land, and buildings equipment, as it's shown up here. Those add up to 75000 meaning that there's still 12500 not accounted for, and that's going to be goodwill. So if you want to put this into the little graph, that I, the little chart that I like to do, this is what that chart would look like. Total cost is 387500 
the fair the book value is three hundred thousand, write ups is seventy five thousand. So the fair market value of the net identifiable assets is three seventy five, and therefore goodwill must be twelve thousand five hundred dollars. The next thing to do now is to do a consolidation on the date of acquisition. And let's just see what this balance sheet would look like if we were going to consolidate the whole thing. We'll do our basic um, big consolidation entry here. I'm going to debit stockholders' equity of this sub. I'm going to credit then 80% of this to the investment account. So that would be 200 plus 100 times 80% would get credit to the investment account, and 20% of it would be credited to non controlling interest in the net assets of special foods. So that would be your basic consult, your basic elimination entry. The next thing now to do is to do all of your various write-ups. So the things that needed to be written up, you know, I'll color this a little so that everything's clear. The things that need to be written up, if you remember, is that there was a write-up of inventory of 5,000. There's a write-up of land of 10,000. And there's a write-up of buildings and equipment of 60,000. In addition, we determined that there should be goodwill of $12,500. So these are the things that need to be written up. And 80% of the write-up belongs to the parent and 20% belongs to the non-controlling interest. So 80% of this, 5,000 plus 10,000 plus 60,000 plus $12,500 is gonna be credited to the investment account. And 20%, the non-controlling interest share, that would be 5,000 plus 10,000 plus 60,000 plus 12,500 is going to get credited to the non-controlling interest. Like so. And again, look at your consolidated column and you can see the investment has been eliminated and the non-controlling interest is $77,500. And the book, I think, shows you, oh, it's going to be later on, as they show you a way to roll that forward if you want. The last thing to do now is to notice this specialized 300000 in accumulated depreciation. You know how we feel about that. That needs to be eliminated. So I'm going to debit accumulated depreciation for $300,000 and credit the base asset, in this case buildings and equipment, for $300,000. And I think I usually make that green. So this would be a full elimination. And now Billings Equipment starts off with a fair market value of $300,000. I think it says it here. There you go. It has a fair market value of three sixty. dollars It's really $300,000, right? $600 minus $300 plus $60 would be three sixty. dollars